Hey, what is going on guys? You're here from Maji and Jay. Today in this video, as you guys probably expected it, I have the brand new Motorola Racer. And I've been anticipating this device now since 2017 that it was rumored. And then finally in November of 2019, it got announced. And now we have the real deal right here in front of me, guys. I really can't wait to unbox this thing. As you can see, I have held all my temptations to open it. It is completely sealed all over. And yes, like I said, I've been anticipating this for the past couple of years, and now the dream became a reality. I did own the Motorola Racer V3 back in, I think it was in 2005, 2006, right before the first iPhone was released. The Motorola Racer was something big out there. Everybody that at least I met at that time had a Motorola Racer just because it was so comfortable to use. I love the flip mechanism. It was a very thin device, very good to grab it in the hand. And again, this device has been reborn today. And I think this thing is gonna make a big impact in the market. Uh, I mean, people are getting tired of that bar, um, you know, style phone, including myself. I wish that things would change like they just did now. And pretty soon we know that Samsung's gonna release their own um, flip phone as well, uh, competing with the Motorola Racer. Now something that you need to know right off the bat about this device, it is considered a mid-range phone because of the specifications. It has the Snapdragon 710, uh, the GPUs, the Adreno 616, uh, it comes with six gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of internal storage, and the display, even though it is an OLED panel, uh, they call it P-OLED, meaning plastic OLED. And on the front we have a G-OLED, meaning glass OLED. Well, it is still, the resolution is not the best out there. I believe the front display, the little one, is a 2.7 inch, and it has a resolution of 800 by 600. The rear one has a resolution a little bit above 720p, but it's not a full 1080p display. And that is a little bit of a bummer because this phone, I just paid $1,604 with 99 cents without accessories. So anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and peel this off from the upper glass. And let's go ahead and cut here the seals. By the way, this is a very unusual box and you guys have probably seen it from other videos out there. Uh, it's it's kind of like a pyramid on the top and uh, at the same time, it's kind of a square in the bottom. Very cool, and we have the Motorola logo right there. Um, and that's pretty much what we get around the box, except for on the bottom, we have the IMEI and the uh, eSIM information and stuff, so you can activate it with Verizon. Like I said, I don't have Verizon because of the simple reason that I use SIM cards all the time to test unlocked devices that only work with GSM networks. So yes, I don't have Verizon, but look at this, guys. Wow so many years waiting for something like this and it finally happens we have on the back side here what appears to be some sort of uh, case maybe this is where the accessories are located very nice and sophisticated if you guys ask me uh, this is a like a denim material feels very nice and on the inside here we have the 15 watt fast charger of course designed here for the usa uh, we have the usb C uh, cable, or this is actually the earphones, excuse me for that. Uh, this phone doesn't have a headphone jack, but they included the uh, earphones so that you can just plug them in on the bottom side of the phone. We have the USB C cable right here. Let's see what else we've got. We have the earphone um, buds as well, and we have more buds here. And I believe we have an adapter here for the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. We have seen this from other manufacturers out there. And it goes from USB-C to the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So at least they were nice enough to include the accessories in case you guys need them. We had the manuals up here and uh, that's pretty much it for the accessories. So let's go ahead and put this back on here let's see i always try to keep it factory to be honest with you guys i uh, purchased this phone but i don't plan to keep it uh, just because of the fact that samsung is going to roll out a device that was well, going to be unlocked it's going to support at&t and, and whatnot i mean i just can't use this i will keep it really but i just can't use it because my carrier again is at&t unless i can call at&t and somehow they can activate the eSIM. 
that'll be great. If I can do that, yes, I'll keep the damn phone. So let's go ahead and take this out of the, what appears to be a docking station. If you guys uh, look at this correctly, actually this is a um, little like boom box where if you put the phone on here and you put music, the sound comes out of the bottom side here and it gives you like a boom sound, which is really cool. So again, here we have the phone and wow, it is thin guys. This is amazing. It has like a nice little weight to it. It doesn't feel cheap whatsoever. So let's go ahead here and peel the front screen protector. Boom. And here we have the 6.2 inch Q or I'm sorry, P OLED, meaning plastic OLED display. And we can see the hinge already on the sides. And this is something I wanted to do. Oh my Lord, check that out guys. Yes, this feels amazing. And I don't see a crease on it when it is fully stretched. I mean, I don't know with long-term use if the crease is gonna be noticeable, but uh, you can tell easily that it is plastic because the screen kind of wobbles a little bit, but that is suspected. I mean, it is plastic after all, guys. So don't expect uh, you know to have perfection here. And by the way, this is the uh, first smartphone or the second smartphone with a foldable display. Let's go ahead and try to peel this off and on the front here, we have that 2.7 inch display that I mentioned before, but a resolution of 800 by 600. I believe that on the side here, we have the power key. Let's just confirm that. I think this is the power key right here. And yes, it is. So let's go ahead and for a second, set this aside. And here we have the welcome screen. What I can tell is that, well, for obvious reasons, we do have bezels on the side here just because of the mechanism that it uses to uh, fold. And on the top, you also have a little bit of a forehead with a notch here. You have the front. This is the 5 megapixel sensor camera, the ear speaker. Towards the bottom, you had the fingerprint scanner, which is really nice to see it on here. Uh, we have supposedly the speakers here and the microphone on the bottom side with the USB-C port right here. Um, on the back side of the phone, we have just a 16 megapixel sensor and this one is able to record up to 4K 30 frames per second. It doesn't have optical image stabilization and as far as I am concerned, it doesn't have electronic image stabilization. I will have to confirm that, but I do see right here some sensors and I have a secondary microphone right there with the LED flash. So in terms of um, how it functions, I would say it's just a standard uh, smartphone that happens to flip. That's basically what it is. So what I'm gonna do is fast forward this video. I'm going to download the Intuitive Benchmark and we're gonna see what scoring we get with this particular device. Alrighty guys, so a couple things I wanna point out after completing the setup is that, well, I almost forgot that the power key and the volume rockers are located on the right side of the phone. It doesn't have expandable storage and it comes with Android 9 and it has some sort of skin on top of the um, operating system uh, by Motorola, which is really nice. And it has a battery only of 2510, so 2510 milliamps. That's not quite sufficient if you guys ask me, especially in 2020. And uh, yes, like I said, I completed the setup and it was uh, fairly easy. We have here now the fingerprint, and that's one of the first things I'm gonna test. So here we have the right thumb. You can see a misreading right there. Let's try the other one, and that one seems to be working a little better. Let's go ahead and try that again, because I did both of them, and now it seems to be working, but we saw some errors on there. So there we go. Now it is functioning great. And it is a speedy sensor also. So let's say your phone is already woken like it is now. It takes like less than a second. If it is asleep and you put your fingerprint, well, it takes about a second. So here we have the OLED panel that I was mentioning before. It has very nice viewing angles. But now, as you can see from the glare right there, the display does have wobbles, meaning that, uh, well, since it is built with plastic, it is not straight as we will see on other smartphones made out of glass. However, the outer glass here is um, a lot better and it's giving us the option to use this camera as a selfie camera, which is a very nice touch. 
So if I enter my fingerprint on here, I believe I can go ahead and unlock this device. Let's see, there we go. And I can actually uh, touch the screen and again activate the camera. There's a whole bunch of settings on here that I can uh, do, which is really, really cool. And of course, I will have to play with this device a little longer before I come up with the final review. This is just an unboxing and uh, to give you guys an overview of uh, what this really looks like. So I went ahead already and tested the rear facing camera. This is the 16 megapixel sensor. And yes, immediately I noticed that again, it doesn't have optical image stabilization. It doesn't have, uh, as far as I'm concerned, let's go ahead and check here from settings. It doesn't have electronic image stabilization, as you guys can tell here from the settings. But um, the quality is not terrible. I mean, it is acceptable for a 16 megapixel sensor, but I will say that this phone has specifications from back, I would say in 2017, 2016 approximately. Um, it is definitely not a flagship device whatsoever. The operating system seems to be working well so far. I mean, everything is quite smooth on here. I went ahead and set up my Play Store. Everything is working fine. No problems there. So far, I haven't seen any updates from this uh, smartphone. Um, I went ahead and, of course, downloaded the benchmarks. I got the Antutu and the Geekbench. And this is definitely a mid-range device, as you can tell, only 183,000. I have seen cheaper, way cheaper uh, Chinese smartphones scoring um, over 300,000 already. So uh, yes, this is definitely not a flagship device. Unfortunately, the Snapdragon 710, it is not as great. Maybe the 765 would have been great. Um, another major disappointment about this particular device is the fact that many phones out there uh, many phones manufacturers are releasing 5g this doesn't have 5g yet so i would say that maybe with the snapdragon 765 it would have been an amazing phone overall so again here we have the score for antutu geekbench gave it a mediocre score for the single core 359 and for the multi-core 1392 Again, um, in 2020, I consider this not to be acceptable. So in other words, guys, we're just paying here for the foldable display, the new technology. And it seems quite interesting. As a matter of fact, when you start folding, you can see that it is super thin. This middle part here kind of elevates a little bit and you can see the thickness of the actual display and it is scary thin. The good news is that it's made out of plastic. So of course, is going to take maybe beating a little bit better, but scratches are gonna be noticeable way faster as well. So as far as I'm concerned, the speakers again are located here in the bottom side, and I told you that the mic was somewhere around here, but no, it is on the inner side here of the phone. There's like a little hole right there, and that's where your microphone sits. Again, the resolution is not bad. Uh, it is quite acceptable, and um, or at least the viewing angles is what I meant to say. The colors being an OLED panel is quite okay. And uh, even with the resolution, uh, by the way, this is, uh, I believe, a 21 by nine um, ratio uh, for the screen. And on the back, we have a four by three ratio. So in case I forgot to mention that, let's go here real quick in um, settings. And as you guys can see, there's nothing uh, special here. Uh, everything is quite standard. Again, we have um, for the storage 128 and out of that right now without using any uh, space yet I have 111 available. So I guess the system is using the rest. That's quite normal. Again, we get six gigs of RAM, which is quite sufficient at least for what I'm going to use this phone for. And yes, I gotta say guys that uh, all in all, um, you know, it looks cool. It is definitely something new out there and pretty soon it's gonna become something big. But for right now, I think it's definitely overpriced for what you're getting. So let me know now on the comment section below if you guys will pass on this or will you purchase it just to see um, how it works and how cool it is when you have it on the hand. I gotta say that this flipping mechanism is absolutely insane in terms that it feels very nice and firm. It doesn't feel cheap whatsoever and there's like some weight to it. And uh, yeah, I gotta say guys that folding wise, it looks amazing. Performance wise, this is most likely not gonna be your best performer out there. So let me know in the comment section below if you guys will pass on this, maybe wait for something uh, better to roll out from the uh, big companies like Samsung. And I know Apple's gonna take millions of years before they release something like this. 
but I'm pretty sure the Samsung is uh, about to roll something out, you know, very cool. Maybe with a better processor, better specifications, something that has a SIM card that has expandable storage. You know, these things we do need. This thing doesn't even have wireless charging. So I would say that it is so far definitely overpriced. So with that being said, I think that now we have completed here the unboxing, the hands-on, and the benchmark testings here of the Motorola Racer. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share, and click on that bell icon as it does help me a lot, and you will get notified every time I upload a video. Thank you so much, and I'll see you guys on my next one.